Hi, my name is Donna Luck Martin. I'm a paramedic and an American Heart Association instructor and a New York State instructor for EMS. We're here today to give you some training videos um, because your consumer has asked you to watch some videos to get some additional information about how to take care of them in the home. Today our topics are going to be CPR, we're going to talk about scene safety, and we're going to talk about common medical emergencies and some first aid um, techniques that you might use to help your consumer. Be aware this is not a certification class. If you would like to be certified in CPR and first aid, you would know, uh, contact your local American Heart Association. The guidelines from American Heart Association do not recommend doing CPR on a person who's sitting upright, and it's for a couple of reasons. When you go to do compressions on the chest, which we'll demonstrate in a few moments, you really don't have a firm surface to push against. This particular chair actually has wheels on it, so if I was going to attempt to do CPR on this patient, I wouldn't have a firm surface to push against because I wouldn't be able to lock the wheels in place. Well, you say I can lock the wheels on a wheelchair. Okay, very well. I can lock the wheels on the wheelchair. However, lock the wheels. And when I go to attempt to do CPR on the person's chest, I don't have a, a firm surface. Also, I don't have a way to really protect the head and neck and keep the airway in line. So we're gonna demonstrate now the proper way that we would do CPR and the first thing we would need to do is to get our client out of the chair and onto a firm surface. This would also apply if the client was in a bed, we would need to move the client to a firm surface in order to effectively perform CPR. So you've walked back into, your, into the room and the consumer is either unresponsive in the chair or unresponsive near the floor and you recognize that you may need to be perform CPR. CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation and our main point in CPR is to do compressions of the chest so that we encourage the heart to push blood through the body. The blood has to circulate through the body in order for oxygen to be delivered to the tissues. So we're going to have the client on a firm surface. We're going to kneel next to the client and we're going to assess if the client is responsive. Are you okay? Are you okay? There's no answer. There's no moving. We want to use what we call a head tilt chin lift to open the client's airway. So we're going to tilt the head and lift the chin and we're going to look to see if we see the patient breathing. If they're not breathing, then we know that we're probably going to have to do CPR and we're going to move right into compressions. Compressions are done right in the middle of the sternum. It's above the ribs and it's below the neck. And you're going to place the heel of one hand over the top and the heel of the other hand above it. And you're going to press straight down. And you're going to press at 100 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 compressions. Then you want to give two breaths. If you know your client, you may want to give mouth to mouth. If you don't, you're going to use the pocket mask place it over the client's nose and mouth and you're going to breathe into it. You should see chest rise on your client. Go back to do compressions again. One, two, three, four. How do I know I'm doing a hundred compressions a minute? Well, there's some songs that are hundred beats per minute and we use the one staying alive. Staying alive, staying alive, uh, 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 staying alive, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30. Two breaths. You're going to continue to do that for about two minutes or five rounds of compressions. If at this point you haven't called 911 or sent someone to call 911, please do so because then professional rescuers will be dispatched to your location and they'll be able to assist you. If the client becomes responsive, yay, you did a good job, <laughs> all right? So you wanna monitor them and make sure that they're breathing effectively. That if they begin to vomit, you would wanna turn them on their side so the vomit runs out of their mouth. And we put them in what we call the recovery position. We'll demonstrate the recovery position in another segment. <laughs> 